ஸ்ரீ சாய்ராம் வெல்கம் டு ஸ்ரீ சத்யசாய் லோக சேவா குருகுலம் டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி பார்ட் எயிட் ஆஃப் த கிங்டம் அனிமாலியா அண்ட் பிளானட்டே ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வீல் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் த ஆன்சர்ஸ் ஃபார் தி ப்ரீவியஸ் ஹோம் அசைன்மெண்ட் வாட் இஸ் சீலோம் அண்ட் ஹவ் அனிமல்ஸ் ஆர் கிளாசிஃபைடு பேஸ்ட் ஆன் த சீலோம் இட் வாஸ் ஆஸ்ட் சீலோம் இஸ் த கேவிட்டி விச் இஸ் ப்ரெசன்ட் இன் த பாடி ஆஃப் தி ஆர்கனிசம் பிட்வீன் the outermost layer the outermost skin and also the internal parts and based on that the animals are divided into three different types they are coelomate a coelomate and pseudo coelomate so these are the three main category in uh, a coelomate we are having sponges as an example pseudo coelomate we are having round worm and the coelomate is all other Uh, organisms you can write echinodermata or you can write even cardate in that category now we'll see the next question define germinal layer the three layer of cells which is present in the developing embryo that is known as the germinal layer they are ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm differentiate cellular level of organization from organ system grade level of organization in that i am putting a table and then dividing the uh, characters based on that in the cellular level of organization the cells will be performing certain function in a coordinated way the cells will be fulfilling the entire need of a particular organism it is coming in sponges then organ or system grade level of organization specific organ or all the organs many of the organs combined together it is forming a system based on that the organism is performing certain functions say for an example the digestive system which is having mouth salivary gland stomach liver and then it is having intestine right so many different kind of uh, organs which is coming together it is performing digestion that is the only one function hence that is known as a system grade of organization here annelida arthropoda any organisms which is above that category you can mention it as an example for organ or system level of uh, classification we will start learning about the phylum porifera first the main characteristic feature in the porifera they are all marine organism that means they are living in the ocean and in the sea water so salt water environment these organisms are living the body with many small pores which is present pores are small small holes which is present on the body and these pores are leading to small canals so they are interconnected inside so small small tubule like structures you can imagine they are interconnected inside the body that is known as a canal or chamber through which the sea water is flowing inside and that is known as canal system this canal system is very much important for this organism because it will bring in the fresh oxygen rich water and the food rich water so that the organism will survive the place where it is permanently present and it has to remove all the carbon dioxide which is produced and excretory waste product produced and all the uh, the germinal cells also it has to leak so all those things will happen because of the water which is coming inside the body and going outside the body so the organism's canal system is playing a major role in porifera in that canal system the largest pore which is present is known as asculum mostly asculum will be present in the topmost part of the body through which the water which will be going outside the organism and the body is enclosed by a large cavity which is known as spongocele hope you know that these organisms are acelomate organism they'll have a cavity which is not of the coelom but it is having a spongocele which is present inside the body and they won't have any organ and they won't have any appendage which will be moving around appendage means outgrowth of the body and different kind of cells will perform different function 
Hence, these organisms are coming under the cellular level of organization. Usually, they will have an internal skeleton because it has to protect itself from the predator which is coming and feeding on. So, it is having an internal skeleton which is made up of calcium carbonate, calcareous in nature. Sometimes, it may be a silicon dioxide crystals, so it is siliceous. So, either one of that the skeleton is made up of and this skeleton is known as spicules. Spicules are small needle like structures these organisms are having in their body and it will have other materials like proteins such as spongin fibers. So, based on that it will make an internal skeleton. So, it will have a rigid body structure. Some organisms will have both calcareous, siliceous and also spongin fiber all together it will make a very strong internal skeleton in this organism. And in this organism the reproduction is asexual means of reproduction where budding is most commonly present. These are the examples of pylum porifera. Here the cycon is mentioned here. On the top we are having a biggest hole which is present which is known as asculum. This is the two different uh, cycon which is attached. So, here in the body so many tiny tiny holes are present through which the water will be going inside. And we are having euplactella. Euplactella will be very beautiful organism. You can see some of the videos or the pictures from Google. You can see how beautifully it is arranged. It is like a flower vase like arrangement we can see in Euplactella. And Euspongia is exactly like the sponge which we are using it in our kitchen to clean the car and all. Exactly it will look like they are the Euspongilla. These are some of the examples of the phylum porifera. Now, we will see the next phylum Snideria. They are hydroids or jellyfish, sea anemone, corals. These are the examples which is coming in this category. They are all showing radial symmetry. Radial symmetry we have already seen in uh, the circle, in the circumference, we can divide the organisms into two equal parts. All are marine organism that is they are also living in the sea, but we can able to see some of the exceptions which is present in this organism. The, say for an example, some of the hydra which is present in the freshwater bodies. Their body either it is fixed like in hydra that is they won't move around, they will fix onto a solid substratum in the ocean bed or the boat which is getting damaged and it is uh, fallen into the ocean floor or some of the rocks which is present based on that it will just attach it to that uh, solid substratum. Sea anemone coral is also in that category, they are also having a fixed mode of life. But we can able to see the free floating organisms such as jellyfishes are also present in that category. So, they are having two different mode of life either uh, it will attach to a very solid substratum or it will be free flowing. So, it is known as polyp. Polyp will be attached to that of the solid substratum and medusae will be freely it will be uh, floating around in the water two different kind of life form we can see in this organism. The body has no head distinctly we cannot see which is the head of the organism imagine a jellyfish we cannot able to see a very prominent head like structure and the body will not show any kind of segmentation. The body is not having any division that we can able to see in the outside body. Then the body wall we can able to see two distinct layer the outermost epidermis and the innermost gastrodermis these are the two layers of the cells these organisms are having they will have in between these two layer a jelly like substance which is present and this jelly like substance is a non cellular mesoglia meso means between right meso mesoglial layer and it is not having any cells present in it. It is like just a jelly like substance which is present between the two layers these organisms are having. 
and they are having a stinging cells with that it will attack the preys and also sometimes human also will get attacked by jellyfishes right they will have so many rashes which is present some are even fatal so the stinging cells are known as sneedoblasts these are present in the organism mostly the stinging cell is present to capture the prey we know these are all heterotrophic organism and all are carnivorous organism that it will feed on other live prey like a fish and small crustaceans which is present in the ocean it will just take and eat the skeleton is calcareous calcareous means calcium carbonate it is made up of you can imagine a coral coral is having a very uh, strong uh, structures right and then it may be horny or sometimes it may be very smooth also some of the corals are very uh, soft corals so they won't have any calcareous structure which is present they are undergoing asexual mode of reproduction by budding because they are sessile organism right they will attach to a solid substratum that is known as polyp so they cannot move around so they will do a asexual mode of reproduction or sometimes they will be doing a sexual mode of reproduction the medusae which we have already seen like jellyfishes which will be floating in the water they will undergo this kind of reproduction so both are present in the organism now we will see some of the example here hydra is present hydra is undergoing budding so the bud will get detached from that of the mother hydra and it will lead a independent life and here uh, example of a jellyfish is given where you can able to see the arms which is present and it is having all the margin is ma having so many tentacles which is present in the center we can able to see the mouth of the organism then the last one is sea anemone you can imagine the jellyfish upside down we can see that sea anemone in the sea anemone it is having a base and it is having a column a long tubular structure the mouth is present in the middle of the organism and then it is having tentacle all around the circumference which is present in the topmost part of the body that is sea anemone so these are some of the examples which is coming in cnidaria phylum next is platyhelminthes they are commonly known as flat worms and they are long elongated in structure they are having a very soft body and they are flat right so dorso ventrally top to bottom it is getting flattened and they are not having any true segmentation and they don't have any body cavity that is coelom is absent in this category of the organism they'll have the some of the structures which is very much important to lead the parasitic life such as hooks and suckers are present sometimes both may be present on the body with that it will cling to the host say for an example if it is living in our intestine then it will cling to the intestine because intestine is the place where constant movement will be taking place right as we are taking food and peristaltic movement is also taking place so these organisms they don't want to wash the way because of the movement what our body is having so it will cling on to the intestine using the suckers and also the hooks which is present in the body and usually they will have both male and female reproductive structure in the same organism few segments will be a male and few are female but even though the segmentation is present it is not a true segmentation which is present in the organism so they will undergo sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction also we can able to see in some of the organism they don't need an alimentary canal because it is living inside the body of the organism so it is getting a totally digested food which is coming so it will happily feed sitting inside the host body so it does not need anything to getting digested because all the digested food is feed it onto the mouth of this organism hence alimentary canal is not present very properly but even if it is present it will have only the mouth that is a small opening through which the food has to go inside the organism in some of the organisms we can see the alimentary canal when it is present it may be a free living organism 
and few are free living mostly they are parasitic organism here the examples are planaria planaria is a free living organism mostly planaria uh, people will grow in the lab to do some of the experiments fasciola that is the liver fluke and it is parasite of the sheep liver then tapeworm that is known as tinea which is a parasite of the human which will live in the intestine of the human these are the pictures the first one a picture is the planaria where we can see they are the free living organism hence eyes are present and apart from that we can able to see that that is having a mouth through which it will feed and it, the gut is also present in this organism whereas in the tinea solium the tapeworm we cannot see the organisms are having any prominent eye like structure which is having a small head which is known as scolex the scolex are having hooks and suckers which is present hooks will be present in two concentric circles in the anterior end and it will be having four suckers which is present in the four different directions of the topmost part of the scolex is having a proglottid that is the entire body of the organism the last one you can see here is the fasciola in fasciola we can see the suckers which is present and it is having a gut which is present inside the organism with the sucker it will get attached to that of the host especially the sheep liver right where it will survive and then it is having a gut through which it will absorb the food material now we are coming to the end of the presentation we will see the home assignment questions explain the general characteristic feature of a flatworm define canal system what are the two forms of cnidaria these are some of the questions asked hope you understand the subject properly thanks for watching om sri sai ram